Hi, I'm Ron Pars from parpools.com, and today we're going to talk about the importance of good water balance. Good water balance affects everything. Good water balance affects your chlorine usage. It affects any kind of sanitizer that you, that you are using in your pool. It affects the equipment, the handrails, the ladders, uh, your filter system. It, it affects pool surfaces. And good water balance can also affect people. So we want to be really clear on what we and how we understand it and what we're doing to make the pool and keep the pool as properly balanced as is possible. Well, when we talk about water balance, there are three essentials to water balance. There is the pH, there is total alkalinity, and there's calcium hardness. Let's take them one, one by one. First of all, there is pH. Now, pH stands for the negative logarithmic value of hydrogen. Basically, what we're measuring is how much hydrogen there is in the water. Keep in mind that everything has a pH level or pH measurement. Pool water, your tears in your eyes, your, your blood, milk, soda, even dirt has a certain pH value, and we need to be aware of those values. And what, what our pH is, what we are measuring is either how basic or how acidic the, the particular item is. In your pool, we, we want to keep track of what the pH is, because as that pH is proper, everything works good, you feel good, your skin feels good, and you get good overall operation of the swimming pool. When it comes to pH, we want to work in a relatively narrow range, and we're working in a range of 7.4 to 7.6. At that level, chlorine works its most effectively. There's the proper balance. It also happens to, to coincide with what the pH of, of your blood is and what the pH of your tears are. So, again, we have overall good water balance. When you have low pH in your pool, there are a couple of things that you should be aware of. Number one, the pool water is very, very clear. A lot of customers, especially come the middle part of the summer, they're, they're, they're very happy but because the, the, because the water is clear, but they're going through a lot of chlorine. Or their hair is turning green or they're beginning to see a little bit of algae. All of those can be cases and symptoms of what's actually going on, and that's the pH being low. So when the pH is low, and that means under 7.0, you'll have very clear water, usually. You will also have high chlorine consumption or sanitizer activity. You will have some eye irritation. You'll have some early algae growth. Uh, you also can have colored hair, and especially if you have blonde hair. What's happening in that case is that any trace amount of copper, because of the low pH, is being plated out onto the hair and therefore turning it green. I remember many years ago, there was a, um, uh, a couple that, that came into the store, and they brought their, they brought their grandchildren in. The grandchildren had their, their beautiful little little blonde girls, but they had green hair. The other part that was uh, that was kind of sad about the about the, their particular situation was that they also had marks in their skin because the pH was so low. And unfortunately, they were looking at just the water clarity and not the water balance. And once we got the water clarity and the water balance. The eye stinging went away, the skin irritation went away, and they were able to maintain a good pool again. When it comes to high pH, which would be pH over 7.8, what, what we can sometimes deal with is dull or cloudy water. When the pH is, is also high, the chlorine starts to slow down, and it's not as active. And so if your chlorine is not as active, it's not able to kill bacteria as well, or control algae as well. Also when it goes to be on the high side, 
that there can tend to be a kind of a slippery or slimy feel to the pool water and also the pool surfaces. So those are the reasons and that's what you're going to look for when you have high pH or low pH and why you want to have a good and proper pH. In order to make pH adjustments, you can add Balance Pack 200 as pH increaser, or you can add uh, products such as BioGuard Low and Slow, which is a dry acid to lower the pH if it is high. Frankly, we recommend a, using a dry acid as opposed to using muriatic or, or hydrochloric acids. Those liquid acids are very dangerous and they're, they're, they're just not a good thing to keep around the home. Our next essential of good water balance is total alkalinity. Total alkalinity is kind of like the ham that's not in the hamburger. What total alkalinity is, is it is a measure of the, of the, of the carbonates that are present in the water, the carbonates and the bicarbonates. And that is important because the total alkalinity becomes a buffer for the pH. So in other words, if you're, if you're dealing with a situation in your pool where the pH is constantly fluctuating, you know that you have a total alkalinity problem. And so when you adjust the total alkalinity to its proper range, that pH is going to level off and you're going to be able to maintain a good pH level for a longer period of time. When you, again, when you have low, pH, low total alkalinity, you'll have pH bounce you will have a constant moving of, of the pH, which is just as fun. And then, and then you'll also have some of the similar, of, uh, similar symptoms of low, of low pH as with low total alkalinity. When you have high total alkalinity, especially when it's way high, you'll have a problem in that you are not able to get the pH back down to something where it is reasonable. High pH is typically caused by one of two things. It can be either the, your own particular source water. If you happen to live in an area of the United States where, where, the, where the total alkalinity of the water is naturally high. Or if you're one of those folks who likes to just throw in a box of baking soda every week, you are going to drive that total alkalinity up way too high. Keep in mind that household products are just that. They're household products, they're food grade products. They're not pool chemicals. They're not made to do what you properly need to do with the pool. Again, with high pH, you'll always have you'll always be struggling to keep the pardon me, with high total alkalinity, you'll always be struggling to keep the pH normal. You will have uh, have a really rough time bringing it back down, and uh, it, it can just cause you problems that, that you don't want to have, especially cloudy water that is almost on the incurable side. In order to adjust total alkalinity, you can add bio, uh, products such as BioGuard Balance Pack 100 if it's low, or if your total alkalinity is too high, you would also add Balance Pack, pardon me, BioGuard Low and Slow to bring the total alkalinity and the pH down. Sometimes there's a little bit of a balancing act, but if you do it properly, it can be done and taken care of. Our third item, or third essential of water balance, is calcium hardness. Many people forget about calcium hardness, and they, and, or they're not worried about it. And the fact of the matter is that when you maintain a good calcium hardness level, that will help to satisfy your, the pool water's natural desire to keep itself balanced. Keep in mind that water is known as the universal solvent. So if you are able to maintain a good, reasonable, proper calcium hardness level, you're going to keep that, that water safe and comfortable, and it is not going to be aggressive. So with a low calcium hardness, you end up with the same issues on a long-term basis as you do with, with low pH, which, which will mean over a period of time corrosion of pool surfaces, corrosion of the, uh, of the pool equipment. Especially if you have a gunite or a concrete pool, it is 
super necessary once the pool is, is initially filled to get the calcium particles in the proper level. What we mean by a proper level for calcium partners is somewhere in, in a vinyl liner pool, somewhere in the 200, 200 to about 275 part per million range. In a, in a gunite pool, about 250 to about 300 part per million. These are ranges, they don't have to be exact, but you want to just be in those, in those ranges. If your calcium hardness is tends to be on the high side just due to source water, which is very, very normal in many parts of the country, you have to keep an eye on that, and you have to balance your water accordingly. You should always be aware of what the source water's pH, total alkalinity, and calcium hardness are. If your, if your calcium hardness tends to be on the low side and you need to add it, then you can add uh, products such as Balance Pack uh, 300 to increase the calcium hardness of the water. If it is high, then the only way to bring calcium hardness down is to add fresh water. If you're using calcium hypochlorite as a normal uh, swimming pool sanitizer, be aware that you're continually adding calcium into the water. One other thing to keep in mind with, with calcium hardness. If the calcium hardness tends to be on the high side, as your water becomes warmer, especially over 85 degrees Fahrenheit, the calcium can actually come out of solution and you can have this very dusty looking white powdery substance all across the pool. There's nothing you can do with it except to possibly take out some, some water and add fresh to re-dilute it. Also as the water temperature comes back down to under 85 degrees, it will then be reabsorbed or it will go back into solution. Just a couple things to keep in mind. As always, we always recommend that you, that you have your water professionally tested at least once each month. Find, out, find a good local pool dealer that you, that you not only trust, but who knows what they're talking about. When you have your water tested, find out what the values are. So many times customers come in and they say, well, my pH is good, or my alkalinity is good. Well, what does that mean? If you know what the numbers are, then you can plug them in and you can see exactly where you stand. If you don't have a local dealer, then send one in to us. We'll be happy to test your water for you. You can find the proper forms that you can fill out and, and send to us, and, and we can test the water. If you have any further questions, you can visit our website. You can also email us at techhelp at parpools.com with any technical questions. Also visit us at parpools.com forward slash pool care for many other questions. Thanks and enjoy the pool.